Crunch Adams, and I'm skipper of the charter boat Poseidon out of Caribbee Key. My wife, Sari, and I are used to receiving all sorts of visitors aboard our boat and in the office. But on this day, we had a caller we really never expected. You Crunch Adams? That's right. Uh, it's my wife, Sari. Hi. My name's Cutter, Treasury Department. Oh. How are you, Mr. Cutter? We're not uh, bootleggers, if that's what you think. I know you're not. I know you've been fishing these waters for years, and I know you can be trusted. Well, how do you like that, the way things get around? <laughs> Where are you fishing your party tomorrow? Well, we're headed down south, a little exploration trip. I'd like you to keep your eyes open. Huh? Anything in particular? Well, you know how wild the waters are down there? All small bays, saltwater jungle. It's impossible for us to watch a tenth of it. Smugglers? Hey, Crunch, I, uh, I brought the dynamite. Oh. Uh, my mate, Des Smith. Mr. Cutter, Des. Hi. Hi. Oh, we got a pal down on one of the islands wants to blast himself a well. Now, I want you to keep your eyes open. Anything uh, in particular? Well, anything suspicious. Fast running at night. I'd like a report on it. Okay. One word of warning, though. These men are dangerous. Oh, listen, honey, I don't think I like you boys taking a chance with men like that. Oh, relax. We got plenty of protection. Got a United States Admiral. Yeah, to say nothing of his daughter and her uh, prospective fiancé. Yeah, we, uh, we don't know if the Admiral's going to approve of Larry. Uh, he's the fiancé. The Admiral's flying all the way down here to give him the once-over. Hasn't met him yet. You know, see if he measures up before he gives him his blessings. I don't envy Larry. I've met the Admiral. So long, Mr. Cutter. Offhand, wouldn't you say it's about time we had a fish? Yes, sir. Just one fish. Now, is that expecting too much? No, sir. Just one little fish in all this big ocean? Hm. Is there one? I believe there is, sir. Yes, sir. Then shall we get it? If not on my line, at least on my daughter's. But if not on hers, then on her fiancé's. Oh, that's all right, sir. I'm having a swell time. Young man, I am of the opinion that failure at anything is deplorable. Uh, Dad, if you'll show me where you keep the coffee, I'll go and make some. Sure, but uh, I'll do it. Virginia will do it. I've tasted your coffee. Well, I'll, I'll help. Young man, you sit right where you are and watch that bait. Young man, how long have you known my daughter? Since she came to college, sir. What do you do at college? Teach? Yes, sir. And just what do you teach? Botany. Botany? You mean, uh, like, leaves and flowers, things like that? Yes, sir, things like that. You think there's any future for it? What? Botany. Well, it's like fishing, sir. It depends. Well, if it's anything like this fishing, it can't depend on very much. 
And as for me, I have had enough of this so-called fishing. Now, hear this. Dynamite. Dynamite? Yes. There's a box down there under the forward bunk labeled a dynamite. I didn't see any label. My nose labeled it. I smelled it when I woke up from my nap. What are you doing carrying explosive, Captain? Well, you see, Admiral, we've got a pal down Explosives here. Explosives on board a fishing vessel? That's against all regulations. I'd be very happy to throw it over the side if, if you're afraid, sir. Afraid? I have somewhat of a reputation for not being afraid, Captain. Yes, sir. And as for you, wipe that grin off your face. You know, I got a funny feeling that somebody's been along here. Huh? Yeah, I've seen some, some roots chopped off two or three places. Yeah, but if it's smugglers, uh, why would they bring it way in here? I mean, how would they get it out? Fly it out. Helicopter. Oh. Hey, it looks like it's opening up. There's a cove up ahead. Yeah. Crunch. Holy cow. We better wave make them think we believe they're just fishermen. Better turn this thing around and get out of here. Skipper, what is this? Who are they? Gentlemen, unless you want them to start shooting, don't try to get away. Stay where you are and anchor now. Will you all please raise your hands? Sounds so polite about it all. Who are they? Smugglers. Look, that's a machine gun he's got. Yeah, they're they're real serious smugglers. That clearing back of the dock crunch, just about the right size for a helicopter. Well, I don't see any helicopter. Yeah, well, it's away on business now, and I know what kind of business. That shack. Must be their supply house, huh, Skipper? That's right. Oil drums, gasoline, it's quite an operation. Will they do anything to us? Well, I'm afraid they'll have to do something. We've caught them. We've what? All we need is for one of those bullets to hit this dynamite we got on board. We might be in real trouble. You there, put over the ladder. And there's the rest of you, stand back. Good day, my friends. Look, mister, what's all the trouble? We're just a fishing party, that's all. We, uh, we were fishing outside. It was too rough, so we came in here. See what's aboard. Remove all guns. And take care of the ship to shore radio phone. Listen, don't smash our phone. It's broken already. Oh, how unfortunate. Perhaps I ought to explain to you, mister, that I happen to be an admiral in the United States Navy. I don't know you, sir. Don't you try to soft soap me, mister. Don't give me that big smile. You threatened us, and you boarded us like pirates. I trust you know what you're doing. Goodbye, one radio phone. A 
My friends seem to have finished their work here. If you'll excuse me, uh, we'll return to shore. You're gonna leave us out here all alone? You will stay on your boat. We will have you under surveillance at all times. My rowboat will take me back to shore. But my cruiser will patrol the entrance to the cove. For how long? Until we finish our work here. You see, we are expecting a messenger boy to pick up some delivery. When he leaves, we leave. Yeah, sure. helicopter doesn't get here till tomorrow, we've still got a chance. Chance? For what? Well, they've given us one break already. What? They, uh, they didn't do a very good job of searching. Hmm? Dynamite. What are you gonna do with that? Well, properly placed, it could do quite a lot of good. Wouldn't you say, Admiral? Right, Skipper. Do you have any caps? Any wire? We sure do. And we have fire fuse, too. It's only about 50 yards to that shack, isn't it? That's right. And uh, no moon tonight. That shack, that's the target? The cruiser, still blocking the entrance to the cove. If, if we could get close enough... Keep your voice down. Sounds travel out here. Gentlemen, here's what we do. Oh, by the way, I'm going to need a little room here. Now, here is the entrance to the cove. Now, these spoons form the outline of the cove. Now, here, these sugar cubes we'll use for the shack. Oh, that's our prime target. I saw them moving oil drums and gasoline in there before. That place must be loaded. Now, here. There's the patrol boat, and here, here we are. Now, gentlemen, we have two jobs, really. One, to get this shack, and the second, to neutralize this patrol boat. And if we get this shack, that whole kit and caboodle in there is finished. But we've got to put this patrol boat out of commission, too. Well, how can we do anything without them spotting us, Admiral? But you heard Crunch. There's no moon tonight. Now, gentlemen, all we have to do is to build a raft out of a couple of our life preservers, put the dynamite on it, and swim to the shore with it. Swim? That's right, swim. And pay out enough wire from the Poseidon to reach to the beach. Now, that's going to take two of us. Uh-huh. Now, we plant the dynamite right next to the shack. We swim back to the Poseidon and set off the charge. Skipper, that ought to be quite a show. Admiral. When do they start killing us with that machine gun? They won't. Now, I know something about dynamite, and I also know how to use it. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to take my word for that. Once this blast goes on the beach, you can forget all about those men. Uh, well, what about that boat? That's for our second task force. While the first unit moves in on the beach, the second unit moves in on the patrol boat. Moves in with what? When that check explodes, there'll be pandemonium around here. And at that instant, those men on the patrol boat will be frozen with fear. And at that instant, they'll be vulnerable. And, gentlemen, at that exact instant, we strike. Admiral, I'm, uh, I'm beginning to find out how we win wars. <laughs> it shouldn't be too tough, Crunch. Although I hate the phrase, we synchronize our watches. At a zero hour, we strike. With dynamite on the beach and with our two men on that patrol boat. How do they get there? They swim there. Hello out there! 
Just because it's getting dark, don't try any funny business. You see, we have a searchlight. Yeah, I can see. about that searchlight, Admiral? Skipper. In the Navy, that's what we call a calculated risk. Now, gentlemen, here's the way it'll work. The dynamiting is my dish. That means that I'll have to be on the beach job. Are there any objections? No. Sure. Now, gentlemen, I have here in my hand three matches. There's one long and two short. Whoever gets the long one will have to go with me. The other two We'll take on the patrol boat. Agreed? Sure enough. Short. Short. Well, I guess it's you and I, Admiral. Good. Now, gentlemen, I would like to do this job when it's real dark. And while some of them on the patrol boat may be sleeping. What do you say if we make uh, midnight, hour zero hour? Time for Larry and me to shove off. Hey, these t-shirts are a good idea, Crunch. They'll help camouflage. Uh, the uh, life preservers with the dynamite and the wires just over the side. Good. And uh, Des and I'll go at 11.45, right? Right, Skipper. And Larry and I should be back here at, uh, say, 7 minutes to 12. 7 minutes to 12? Well, that's cutting it a little fine, isn't it, Admiral? My boy, you should have been with me at Saipan. Gentlemen, let's check our watches again. Five. Four, three, two, one, mark. 11.01, right? Oh, Dad, they've been hitting the boat every half hour with that searchlight. Yes, I know, Virginia. But if it comes before a quarter to 12, Crunch and Des will be here with you. And the three of you will just have to make some excuse for Larry and me. What if it comes while she's on here alone? Then Virginia will just have to go out there and make excuses for all four of us. And I don't think that's going to be easy. that wire, Larry. If you get bushed, let me know. I'll take over. Okay, sir. I'm all right. about halfway there now. I'd like to see that searchlight come on in about 10 minutes. We'll be ashore then, have it behind them. That's asking a lot, Crunch. the other end of this wire's on the Poseidon. It is. Well, it's uh, 10 minutes more before we shove off, Crunch. Yeah. No searchlight yet. I, I can't figure it out. Crunch, you don't suppose Oh, no. That... It's all right. If there'd have been any trouble, we'd have heard something. Come on. Let's go.
Who's there? What is it, Peter? I thought I heard something. Put the search light on. We'll check them. you sleeping? I'm just not sleepy. Why don't I set the board out for you? Try me in an hour. Want me to wake the boys? <laughs> no. Let them sleep. All right. I'll call for you in one hour. Be ready. I'll be ready. Everything is all right, Peter. Make me some coffee. Yeah. Now, if Crunch and Dez can only pull their end off. Good heavens! Crunch! Dez! Are you all right? Everything's secure. What were all those shots? It was Dez. Ever had his hands on a machine gun before? Had to try it. Shot it up in the air. <laughs> well, I guess that takes care of this little campaign, eh, what? No, not quite, sir. There's something else. What is it, Larry? Now, hear this. I'm going to marry your daughter. Oh, just like that, huh? You are going to marry my daughter. Yep. That's what I said. I'm going to marry your daughter. Sir. Permission granted. <laughs> <laughs> 